it says in 2 Kings chapter 6, I'm reading from starting in verse 14. And he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. Now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. And his servants said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered him, said, Do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots and fire, chariots of fire all around Elisha. Alice and I, way back in uh, probably 1976 or 77, had the opportunity, we met a fellow named Harold Hill. Have you heard of Harold Hill? He wrote a book. He, well, he's written a number of books. Yeah. And I, I think the one that was his very bestseller was How to Live Like a King's Kid. Mm -hmm. Now, Harold Hill was a very brilliant man. He was a very successful engineer, an incredible mind. Uh, but he says that he was another failure, basically, because he was an alcoholic. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Until... He encountered God opened his eyes so he could see Jesus Christ. Amen. That changed everything. So this book, How to Live Like a King's Kid, is just a, a group of small testimonies about things that God did in his life. Mm -hmm. But the thing, and as I say, we met him back then. That's a long time ago now. He uh, was, what, 70? He was old. Really, yeah, he was yeah, when old. we met him, he was old. 70s. Wait a minute, he was younger then than I am now. <laughs> okay. Okay. He was our age now. Yeah. <laughs> we are now. But what a delightful, yeah. delightful man mm -hmm. because of the way he saw everything. Yes. But something he said just struck me so much. It's like when something goes wrong, do you start moaning and groaning and complaining and say, oh, Lord, save me? Or do you say, what's in this for you, Lord? What's in this for you? How can you be glorified, Lord? Amen. And over and over and over, he talked about how when he had that attitude, when he had that perspective, looking at his problems as opportunities for God to be glorified, you know what happened? God was glorified. That's right. That's the attitude of the righteous. It is. Because that should be our great desire, mm. is to see God exalted, to see God glorified. Okay? Think about what it says in Ephesians 1.18, when Paul prayed for the Christians at Ephesus. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? We need to pray that God opens our eyes. Yes. Well, but that means having a spiritual appraisal of things. Mm -hmm. It's not about having 20-20 vision. It's about seeing things spiritually, seeing the spiritual truth. It's there. And it's like, it's like Elisha at Dothan. The chariots, the chariots were there, yeah. but the servant couldn't see him until, the, until God opens his eyes to see them. We need to have our eyes open that God always has a purpose and a plan. And his plan for us is a plan for life, right? And he is faithful. Well, what, how much more clear could this be? Mm. Paul wrote to the Corinthians in, sec, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is a spirit, spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. And, you know, we talked about this. You ever, uh, if you were going to go sell a diamond or buy a diamond or whatever, you know, you take a diamond into a jeweler. The first thing he does is he takes out a loop. That's that magnifying glass or eye piece that he has. And he studies that. And he looks, I'm not a diamond guy, but you know, he looks at, what is it? The, the, the facets. The carrots, the, carrots, the cut, cut, the and clarity, the and the color. Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But he has to, he, he can't just glance at it and say, he takes that loop and he, he considers it carefully, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, we need to do that, but the loop that we have is the Word of God. Yes. We need to look at everything and appraise everything through the Word of God if we are going to see the truth. Okay. Otherwise, you're seeing something false. If you want to see God at work. If you want to see God at work, all right?
for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. The way is clear, my path is straight. I'm full of love instead of hate. I see the I know